Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart with the Ted Show. Super excited to have the one and only Crystal Dombrowski on the show today. Crystal, welcome. Hi. There we go. We're live. Um, so I just yeah. want to, I'm going to play this so that I can look at the questions, everybody. Happy Friday. I love Crystal's topic. I think it's amazing. Uh, so we all want to kind of figure out what's going on in our world so we can use our paintbrush, which of course is an analogy for what Crystal does in her world. Yeah. Uh, so welcome. Thanks for being patient. Thank All right, you so for Crystal, are you, absolutely. I, I love your work. I love what you do. I think you've got great energy, and I think we all could use that positive right now, since we're all socially distanced, um, and there's so many different ways and different different ways that we're all kind of coping and figuring stuff out. So paintbrush is a great analogy. I think we all have a clean a clean palette, uh, completely whiteboarded palette. So. <laughs> Um, and is palette even the right word? We have a clean whiteboard here. We'll go with that. Enough of me trying to talk about painting. Crystal, take it away. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about you. Okay, thank you again, Ted, for having me. Uh, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an artist. I'm a visual contemporary fine art painter and originally from New York, born and raised. Uh, a lot of people will ask me, you know, what got me started uh, as a painter, as an artist. Uh, I have to say from a childhood, you know, uh, we didn't come from much. My family, uh, you know, my dad was one of seven and uh, he instilled in us the hard work ethics. And if you want something, you work really, really hard for it. Um, all right, before you go, let me hold on. I'm going to ask the, I want to ask the audience yeah. something. Can you all see her? How is she looking on your end? Because uh, Crystal's a little buffered on mine and I just want to make sure that we are seeing her clearly on the Facebook Live uh, feed. That's the great thing about having your own show and no producer. You can stop the show for a second and make sure. Um, but I want to make sure. Maybe you can look at your phone, Crystal, and see how it's looking to you. Yeah. It's a little buffered on my end, but Okay. I'm well, not... we're just going to keep, we're going to keep rolling and we're going to hope for the okay. best um, and right. see what we can get. All right. So your dad instilled in you the work ethic. Was, were there artists in the family? Was everybody an artist? Yeah. So my dad used to paint on the weekends. He'd uh, bring myself and my brother on Saturday uh, afternoons and we would have family day and paint. Uh, he would bring out his oil paints and, and those were oil paints he had from being a child. So there were very old oil paints. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I had a couple of problems growing up. I had dyslexia and I had a speech impediment. And uh, so my, my parents enrolled me in special ed uh, growing up I in the Bronx. I didn't know that. Uh, they give you, oh yeah. So uh, growing up in the Bronx, they give you aptitude tests. And so I scored uh, high on dyslexia and uh, I also had major speech impediment and I was an introvert. So, uh, you don't seem like any of those things me. right now, Crystal. <laughs> I was, I, I also had, uh, I also had a lot of phobias. So I was afraid of water. I was afraid of heights. Um, and I was afraid of people. So, uh, wow. to have eye contact with people, uh, to get up on a ladder or even to swim, uh, it was hard. You know, when I turned 18, I decided I wanted to overcome all of my fears. And so I did. I, I took different classes, different programs to overcome all of that. And when I was growing up in the Bronx, because my, my parents put me in a special education class, they used art as a way for me to communicate better. Um, yeah. communicate my emotions, communicate um, just on a level where I can relate to the world better. And, and that, that really helped me. Uh, when I was 13, I was accepted to LaGuardia Performing Arts High School in Manhattan. Uh, I, I only got to go for a short uh, period of time because my dad at the time was afraid for my safety I was uh, 13, going to high school in Manhattan, going from the Bronx, and I was going by myself on the subway. So, uh, at I about- I wanna share, I want, I want you to get some positive, 
I want to get you some positive feedback really fast. Uh, Will, Benton okay, says, cool. Will Benton says, so excited that Crystal is joining the Favo family. And then Janet, uh, you, hey, Will. Janet. Love you. And then Janet says, I believe that we could all overcome fears. Congrats, Crystal. So you got some love and support out there. I think, it's, I, I think it's fascinating because what you're sharing, because I, I believe that you had to make, you said it, you had to make this decision that at 18, you were going to do it, uh, which is not easy for yeah. a fearful person who has other issues that you're dealing right. with to actually make that leap and that commitment to do it. it yeah, it was totally a me decision. Uh, my brother, who's no longer with us uh, now, he and I would talk a lot about uh, having strength and overcoming. Uh, we lived in a very different dynamic of a family uh, where my brother and I had a lot of morals instilled on us, um, but there was a lot, also a very strict family uh, bracket. And so because of that, um, my brother and I had to rely on each other to give each other good feedback. And he was very big, positive influence in my life. Um, and so I think with, without him in the back of my head telling me that I can do it, I can do whatever I put my mind to, um, it wouldn't have made me the, the strong person that I am today. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I overcame a lot. And, and but yeah you have to make the the decisions as an individual whether you're going to continue to live in your environment or you're going to um promote this new environment where you can lift yourself up out of whatever you're facing and just pro project yourself up and and do things that are hard to do but you know in your mind and your heart that you can do it. There's nothing that you can't do. So let me ask you, I'm 18, you decide this. That. At 18, you decide yeah. it. And then, but that, so yeah. a lot of 18 year olds will make a decision. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to college, I'll go to trade school. I'm just gonna start working. Yeah. That doesn't mean yeah. that you can make it into a full-time life, full-time career. So what was the path that you took? You can, you can. You can. You have to have, you have to have the drive and you have to have uh, the mindset that you can do it. Because without that, you're going to let all those negative voices in your head kind of keep you down. Um, there's something that lives inside of us, that inner voice that's inside of us. I mean, even with what's going on today, you know, we could let all of the static that's around us kind of keep us down, but you have to let this inner child that's inside of you grow and you have to let them know that no matter what's going on, that you're going to do your best to, to give that child a place to play and an environment to breathe and to be good and to just flourish. Um, so I don't, I don't believe in the, I can't, uh, scenario. I believe in, uh, you, you put forth every bit of effort that you can every day and you put all your energy into something that's positive and the universe will take care of you. And I know that that's a very abstract thing to think about as an individual. Uh, some people think of, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're talking nonsense, the universe, the universe. Well, the universe is real. You know, what, what we project, what uh, emotions that we put out into the environment that we're living in or the world we're living in, it has an effect. It has an effect on you on your actions, on other people, uh, how people perceive you, uh, how you perceive others, how you impact your environment in your, your world. And so to me, when I say the universe, I literally mean the universe, the world, because as I perceive the world and as I live in the world, 
it gets changed by what I speak, how I, how I act. Um, I'm not perfect. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, when this coronavirus started, uh, up until probably a couple of days ago, I was in a deep depression and it was really hard because Why? it hit me emotionally. It's draining me to hear that there are so many people dying, that there are people um, that are being affected by it. I financially am affected by it. Uh, my shows all got canceled, all of them. So um, for, for some people that look on the outside, you know, I'm a full-time artist. This is all I do. This is how I make my living. So when a show gets canceled, um, one show, you can deal with it, you know? Two shows, maybe. Seven, eight shows, that's a pretty big hit, you know? And so, um, yeah, I have, I have things that keep me busy, but uh, it emotionally does take a big chunk out of, out of me. Uh, emotionally. So, what are you doing to combat um, that? Well, I'm laughing as much as I can. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my my humor up. Uh, you know, there's only so much that you can control, and you you can't let things that are beyond your control control what's in here and what's in here. So um, I'm just trying to keep my, my senses positive. I, I burn sage in the house. Um, I meditate. I talk to my husband who makes me laugh. And he, he's really my sounding board because um, there are times where, you know, I get frustrated just like any other person. And uh, he'll say, well, you know, it could be worse. You could, you, you know, you could have this, that, or the other. And, uh, and it, he, he'll make me chuckle or laugh, you know? So, so you have a lot um, of love. Coming I'm grateful on. to have him. You have a lot of love coming on the comments. So later on, I promise everybody who's commenting, you have a lot of comments. A lot of people are sending you love. So oh, I can't see anybody's I know, comments. You can't, so, uh, so we can't see it. Anybody... I'm, trying, I'm trying to focus on you, but I want to yeah. ask you, I just wanted to acknowledge them. Yeah. I want to ask you, has the has this stimulated your creativity? Are you are you painting differently? Are you thinking about your art differently? Are you creating differently? So 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 to be honest, um I worked on commissions and I finished a few commissions. Um, but no, no, um, it has emotionally hurt me and I paint for my emotions. So um, I, I, I've been working on a new concept um, that I, I put a little video out on um, for a piece that I'm working on in Greece. And it kind of makes me emotional right now because it hurts um, to think about the COVID virus. Uh, so I need to be in a, in a positive atmosphere when I'm painting. Um, so no, I haven't been able to paint. Sorry. Um, and, and, uh, and I know this, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to cry. So, um, we're all emotional. It's, it's okay it's to just, cry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hurt. It's hurt me, you know? So I need to get to that positive, um, uh, elevation where I can paint. Um, so I've been painting in spurts. Uh, when I feel okay, I start to paint. And yesterday, for the first time in two weeks, I, I started painting uh, Poseidon. And so Poseidon uh, is a new concept for me. It's for a Greek museum, a family museum that has uh, asked several Orlando artists to do 
pieces and they send out the canvas and you can do whatever you want and they just want it for their museum. So uh, I've been really wondering what I was gonna paint. And so I had, I, I don't know if you're familiar with my, my type of work where I start with an abstract uh, background and then I incorporate metals and I'll study the abstract. And if I see something within the abstract, I bring that to life. So um, I was studying it uh, a few days ago and I saw Poseidon and, or some people say Neptune. And I just started really getting excited about him. And I don't use any references. I just literally go by the painting and I allow it to come to life. And I talk to my painting and I, I laugh and I, we tell jokes and I know it sounds so totally ludicrous. I love it. I don't think I, it does I get all. to know my, yeah. <laughs> I get to know my paintings. And so Poseidon is a very interesting God. And, and he told me the, the story about how, yes, the Greeks have him as this underwater God and they think that he looks human and all that. Um, but my Poseidon doesn't, he's got some weird stuff going on. You know, <laughs> he, he, he has a human face and he's got the chest and the arms and the shoulders, but everything else is not human. And so it's really interesting um, because even his, his, uh, after, after the pectorals on the top of his chest, he has a barrel stomach and it's muscular, but it's almost like a porpoise, you know, like a porpoise's, cool. uh, belly and it comes down and then, uh, he has some other pretty cool things. I, I don't really want to give it away. No, but you know um, what I love about this? I love that even though you're a little delayed on my end and nobody seems to care because what you're speaking about is so heartfelt. But what I love is that I can see your face light up when you're talking about art and this project. And that was a completely oh, big it. transformation from when you were talking about what you're dealing with. So this is something that not only speaks to you, you have a passion about it, but you're also, it, it shows that that is a positive thing for you. So nobody's, nobody should judge anybody about how they're coping, dealing, being creative, because I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I love the smile, Thank I you. love the laughter. You. Uh, you did that when you talked about your husband and when you talked about Poseidon, which is really cool. I mean, I think it's amazing. Yeah. So let's tell about, so let's talk about your- I, I get into this. Go ahead. I, I was just, I get into this um, fantasy world when I paint and sometimes I'll, I'll think about current events and if I get too emotional, I just, I, I like shut down. Uh, but when I get to do like a project like Poseidon um, and, and it starts morphing and um, so his special powers, he's a god of the ocean and so um, all of, all of the different parts of his body kind of relate to the ocean. And so it kind of tells like how he's interconnected with the ocean. Um, but yeah, my, my brain goes through these spirals of like, uh, thought and I think we're uh, all feeling that though, emotion. right? Like one day, one minute I'm super yeah. positive and then I get some create, I try not to listen to the news, but you're, you're surrounded yeah. by it. And then I hear something, I'm like, okay, I can't look at that anymore. And then it, it does, there's nothing, I mean, it's human. It's gonna impact your, your, your soul, your spirit, your thought process. And sometimes just having an outlet and going to where the happy place is and everybody's got a different one. Um, and sometimes yeah. it's White Claw for me. Uh, sometimes it's obviously Poseidon <laughs> for you. Uh, but everybody's got a different way. And I think what's important about what you're saying, many things are important, but one of the things is it's okay to go right now, especially to go through that roller coaster of emotion. You're not going to have every perfect day. Not every day is going to be perfect, yeah. but you're going to have perfect moments in the day. And to be able to focus on those is really important. I, I think you're right. You know, we're all human. And so if you're not feeling something right now, 
whether it's happy that you don't have to go to work and you're home and you get to play video games and mo catch up on your movies or, you know, like, like for me, uh, I do go through that roller coaster. Um, I don't like hearing anybody be in pain. Uh, I don't like, I don't like to hear uh, the everything. It just becomes, I'm an empathic person. I was just going to say, so you're an empath I, yeah. and a hundred, I am too, a yeah. hundred percent an empath. That's yeah. just how we, that's how we receive all of this information in the world and we feel it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we feel I it. Mean, in I a love way going to people, giving them hugs, you know, yeah, and I, know. Um, I, I'm a big believer in trans transference of energy and emotion. Um, so when somebody's sad, you know, a lot of times there are no words, but there's a hug right. and that hug makes up for that, you know? Uh, so yeah, I mean, gosh, <laughs> not being able to hug or touch it's is so hard, hard, you know? Like it's, it's just yeah. it's difficult for a huggy person, especially a huggy person. Like, I just want to go in for the hug every time. Or when I see somebody suffering, like you said, I want to, I want to tell them I love them and give them a hug. And now I have to do it on video. Uh, it's, it's just, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I'll do this. I'll do that. <laughs> All right. So before we head I out, I want to ask it. you to share, can yeah. people still purchase your work? Yes. Yes. So how so do they find you? Right now, my website is. Okay, so right now my website is outdated and I'm in the, the process of trying. I, I am not a techn technological person at all, but I'm trying desperately to work on uploading my artwork to my website. So my website is www.crystaldombrowski.com. Uh, they could reach me reach out to me on my website uh they can call me my phone number is 407-925-9978 uh i'm a business so i will answer every and any phone call um they can find me on facebook or instagram uh i can they can ask me you know what what artwork do i have and i'll share with them you know little photos of what i have available um and then kind of go from there i do take commissions so if somebody wanted to commission me to do a pet portrait uh in my style um i could uh do that i love it uh and my commissions are fairly reasonable you know so my artwork has a range you know the larger pieces are going to be a little pricey uh, but the smaller pieces are more affordable for for you know everyone to have a chance of having some original artwork. So crystaldombrowski.com. So, yeah. We'll share all of Crystal's contact yeah. information, I promise you guys. All right, so you know the last thing we like to head out before we, we close. Uh, you already mentioned your husband, you're welcome to mention him again. Can you give a shout out, show some gratitude yes. to somebody who helped you along the way, maybe a mentor. I think we all could use a mentor slash counselor slash helper right now. Somebody who helped you along the way yeah. in your personal professional life. Well you know it probably goes back a very very long time when i was in grade school there was a guidance counselor that uh, i went to and he sat me down i was eight nine years old and he sat me down and he said you have a choice you can live your life in fear and anger or you can change it around. You have that power. And I walked away from his office and I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not out of control. I need to take control. So then I decided I was gonna really try and live my life, not for other people, but to just be a good decent person Love it. Uh, I didn't want to live my life trying to live up to other people's expectations because I was never going to get their approval so I just wanted to be uh, a decent person 
you know, uh, I, I do have to thank my husband because uh, he was and has been a really good sounding board for me. Uh, I've, I have friends that for, for me have been paramount in keeping me grounded, uh, feeling loved. Uh, and so I wanted to, I, I want to thank Kate, Kate Iguizio. She's, uh, gosh, if you could have somebody that is just a part of your soul, that never bats an eye when you say you need to talk to somebody, uh, always lifts you up um, and makes me laugh like a hyena. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kate, you know. What's and then the as far counselor? as, huh? What was the counselor's name? Your guidance counselor. <sighs> You know, I I can't rem uh, I can't remember his name, but I'll never forget his face. And you never you I um, love the fact before we head out, you remember that as a child. You remember how impactful that was yeah. as an eight or nine year old. Guys, we got we have to yeah. just give a shout out. Think about those things. Think think about those people that changed our I think lives. About that. All right, you've been enjoy. You're yeah. amazing. Crystal thank you. Nebraska, you thank you so you much are. for sharing. That was your heart and that was raw. And I cannot thank you enough. And you will see the comments. These The people who watched also were uh, totally listening to everything you were saying. Uh, so I am going to head out. I will reach back out okay. to you. We love you guys. We'll be back live in about 30 minutes. But thank, thank you, you Crystal, so love you. much. Love thank you. you, everybody. Appreciate you. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. All right.